Wow, sudah lama saya tidak menyaksikan um, Pak Prabowo segarang ini. Jadi beliau sedang diwawancarai oleh di asing Al Jazeera. Ada banyak banget pertanyaan dan juga jawaban yang menurut saya, wow. Bener ini Pak Prabowo ini Seberani itu ternyata Pak Prabowo di mata asing Ini di, di media internasional ya Pak Prabowo bisa sampai segitunya Pak Prabowo itu lagi dikulitin soal Papua Jadi kondisi di Papua tentang kekerasan yang ada di sana Tapi jawaban yang dilontarkan oleh Pak Prabowo Itu bikin jurnalisnya gelagepan Ada juga asing dan Eropa selalu ikut campur urusan Indonesia. Dan Pak Prabowo bilang dengan lantang bahwa kami bisa menyelesaikan demokrasi kami sendiri. Asing tidak perlu ikut campur karena kami berazas kepentingan rakyat. Selain itu tadi juga uh, membahas tentang rekam jejak Pak Prabowo di saat menjadi tentara dulu. Jadi di kulik-kulik tuh masa lalu Pak Prabowo akhirnya muncul dari uh, mulutnya Pak Prabowo sendiri bahwa itu adalah bagian dari pembunuhan karakter. Jadi Pak Prabowo dengan sadar bahwa ketika beliau masuk ke ranah politik maka itu akan menjadi... Um, Ya hal-hal semacam itu pembunuhan karakter akan muncul Ya akhirnya terjawab sudah apa yang menjadi keresahan kita selama ini ya Jadi mari kita saksikan saja bagaimana uh, wawancara ini secara full uh, Karena disitu banyak banget hal-hal baru yang menurut saya Wow Pak Prabowo ternyata segarang ini Makanya nggak salah kalau di endorse oleh Pak Jokowi yeah. in Papua rather than throughout the country. How do you know that? Have you been there? Why didn't you go there? Well, it's very difficult huh? actually for foreign media <laughs> to, to enter Papua. You talk Papua as if... I'm not defending all incidents we will uh, deal with seriously, but mm-hmm. you know, your question a bit one-sided. Mm-hmm. Why don't you open the YouTube or the channels of, of these uh, so-called Papua independence movement on their channel you can see how they mistreat their own people so would that be ensuring the security of the situation in Papua how can that be done look Indonesia is not only Papua we will ensure security all over Indonesia mm-hmm. right and our approach is always to negotiate you know uh, these uh, terrorists who attack their own people who attack schools, burn, uh, kill civilians. You talk about one incident. Yes. Do you know that they, they killed workers on the road? Yes, I know that there are but many But you didn't ask about it. How, how many workers they killed? Unarmed yes. civilian workers. How many workers they killed? I Two, three, four? There have been many incidents. Huh? There have been many incidents. Yeah, what I'm saying is civilians. they carry out acts of terrorism. They. They, uh, what do you call it, took a hostage, which they have not released, an unarmed foreign civilian, mm-hmm. right? Yes. The w- where is the indignation from, from the NGOs, from the foreign press? Mm-hmm. No. I think perhaps the indignation is, is for both sides, just for, for people to, to live safely, Mr. President-elect. And perhaps... Oh yeah, we will secure the safety mm-hmm. of our people. They've been attacking civilians mm-hmm. many, many times. Mm-hmm. And you guys don't report that. Well, well, we try to report the the full story. It's there. I always say, we never went to Europe, but the Europeans came to us. Mm-hmm. They basically colonized us. They interfered in our internal politics for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. In India, in... the kingdom of Burma, in Indochina, Malaya, in China. China was invaded also in the last two, three, four hundred years, right? So we experienced that. We have this. And so, for instance, Southeast Asia, we were, we had wars in Southeast Asia. 50 years ago, 60, I mean, you know, Indonesia was in armed conflict with Malaysia. with Singapore, but we solved it without foreign interference. We talked, we met. And that is the, the Asian way? I think so. Mm-hmm. Mr. President-elect, that has expressed some concern 
on the basis of not your time as defense minister, but your past in the military, that they have concerns about, about that and accountability. How would you ensure that they also feel that you are a president for them? You talk about democracy. Mm -hmm. The people have decided. Full stop. Mm -hmm. What concerns? You know, in every election, they will try to look for this weakness and that weakness and this and that. And if I was a general. I'm a proud general. I serve my people, serve my country. I risk my life for my people. I've been accused of so many things. It's called demonization. Mm -hmm. So it That is called character assassination. It's part of the tools of politics. Mm -hmm. So I, I face that, I risk that. Mm -hmm. Accusations are completely uh, insulting and very false, but that's, that's the name of the game. The Indonesian people want a democratic system. Mm -hmm. Political power comes from the people. Mm -hmm. We go, we rule, we govern with the consent of the people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's our people who decide, mm -hmm. right? We are not going to be determined by uh, foreign uh, narratives, right? Foreign uh, interpretation of what democracy should look like. Prabowo Subianto, President-elect of Indonesia, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Senang bisa berbicara lagi dengan Bapak Prabowo. Let's begin with talking about the election. A, a landslide victory for you, almost 60% of the votes, victory in 30 out of 32 provinces, certainly a result that any candidate would have been happy with. What made the difference this time? Because you've run for president before twice. Why do you think your message appealed to voters this year? I think a combination of uh, factors, maybe uh, precisely because I ran twice before, I think my message, my narrative, my, my principles uh, reached the people. And this time, of course, I have to say that I felt uh, that I basically uh, became part of the incumbent team. So I think that also uh, was a great factor. That's something that many observers have talked about, and they've called it this Jokowi effect, the effect of your perceived closeness with the president and how that may have boosted your chances. What do you make of that? Well, if you know, uh, President Jokowi Dodo has what? Now 82, 83% favorable rating in the public opinion polls. And of course, uh, the people felt his commitment to bring uh, betterment to the people's uh, conditions, especially the poor. So yes, I think I, uh, the, the, that Jokowi effect uh, really uh, helped me also. You, sir, have run against President Jokowi twice. You were political rivals. Was there a genuine change of mind on your part to, that allowed you to work more closely with him? You know, uh, traditionally, in Indonesian politics, the winner wants to make sure that uh, his rival doesn't uh, ever re-emerge, right? But this time, he, I think he, he understood that I was committed to the betterment of the Indonesian people, especially the poor. And I think basically, which I found out later, he did, he does have the same values as I do. What are those values? I think the value as a, as a son of Indonesia, we want our people to live a, a dignified life. And uh, poverty is not dignified. An independent country, their people must live uh, with the basics. You know, uh, we cannot live in poverty. We'll talk about poverty in a moment. Yeah. 
you mentioned sons of Indonesia, and of course, one son who has really been in focus during this whole campaign is your running mate, Gibran Raka Buing Raka, yes. the country's next vice president. A controversial pick, certainly in the early stages of the campaign. What does he bring to the table apart from being President Joko Widodo's son? We cannot take uh, the fact that he's a son of President Jokowi mm. as not an important factor. Mm. But Jokowi has 82% favorable rating, right? Is there a quality that the new vice president will, will bring to the job? Perhaps his youth might be a, a positive factor. I think that's also a very important factor. As you know, uh, I think it's more than 52% of our voters are young. Yes, more than 63 million between 17 and 30. Right. In a three-candidate race, what was the main challenge in getting your message across to those young voters? I think uh, I had the advantage because, you know, the young, they are more concerned about jobs mm -hmm. because that's their future. Mm. They're concerned about education, they're concerned about jobs, they're concerned about equal opportunities. So would you dispute, perhaps there were some criticisms of your campaign that there were, there were some gimmicks with the, the cartoons and the dances, that it actually wasn't about that, it was about the substance that appealed to young people? Oh, you know, gimmicks are gimmicks, right? I mean, you can have gimmicks and be a clown, mm. right? You can dance all you want and you become a buffoon or you become... Uh, first, I think, is the message. And uh, the young, in this age of social media, mm -hmm. the information revolution, you know, they, they get on very fast. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing about the young, they, they, see, they see very fast who is genuine and who is acting. Mm -hmm. So I think I got the advantage there because, you know, the promises of your potential policies rather than the style of the campaign. Yeah, not only promises, they see promises uh, make sense or not, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Promises make sense, promises solve problems or not. Mm. I, think, I think that's the... Mm. There was also a criticism made during campaign season, before election day, that perhaps your, your team had an unfair advantage by means of support from the state, by means of potential misuse of social aid. That was something that your opponents repeated, but also some civil society organizations. Does that affect how you perceive the victory in any way at all? Well, you know, accusations are easily made, but when the scrutiny is done correctly, intensively, I mean, if you will find out that the, those accusations are very very uh, empty and very, uh, I would say, very uh, selfish accusations. Do you right? deny there was any conversation about this use of social aid during campaign season? Social aid is there in our budget Yes. for many, many years, mm -hmm. right? It was approved by all parties in parliament. So what? And then can you imagine uh, about this uh, aid, social assistance, right? By the way, in Outside Indonesia, we have a large community of, of Indonesians living abroad. Mm -hmm. Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, the Middle East. And I won by 63% and there was not one social assistance package sent. And I won by 63%, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And all these social assistance were given in all the provinces and I lost in two of them. Mm -hmm. Would you be looking to work with the people who opposed you in the election? I am willing to work with anybody for the good of the country. Let's talk about some of the, the policies that we can expect. And one of the key projects initiated by President Joko Widodo is this new capital project in East Kalimantan. Yeah. Does this project have your full 100% support? Okay. This idea of moving the capital was actually for many, many years, uh, since even our first president, President Sukarno. Yes. And uh, there was always this move that this capital should be more central position. And also that we have problems actually in Jakarta. Oh. 
Jakarta is, uh, I think, uh, already way beyond the the capacity of the area to to support a population of 20, 25 million people. Uh, we have to invest more to save Jakarta. How do you address the concerns about how this project may affect the indigenous communities? There are some uh, NGOs that estimate some 20,000 indigenous people may have to be relocated to make way for infrastructure for the capital. What can be done for them? The interest, the security and the future of all the indigenous people are highest priority in my, in my view. We have to protect them, we have to secure uh, their livelihood, and we have to do a lot of uh, planning and research that we do not displace too many people. And if we do, we must uh, compensate and we have to uh, guarantee their well-being. Because this is a theme that comes up not only in terms of the new capital, but whenever there are major development projects, for example, the Mandalika Circuit, Lombok, there are indigenous communities who feel they don't receive the benefits of these major infrastructure. Projects. Yeah, I would like to repeat that in my, in my life, in my commitment that mm -hmm. I will defend the, the, the interests of my people, indigenous people included. Mm -hmm. we, 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 will, we will defend their, their my, my, my strongest support are from, from those who are weak. You've proposed many strategies to help low-income households in particular, but a key promise made during the campaign, and in fact the one that was all over the posters in the lead-up to the election, was this free lunch program for school children. Some more than 80 million people will receive this free yeah. lunch and free milk. What is the reason that yeah, that program it, it actually, is needed? Like, yeah, I think free meal program is, uh, is very urgent. And it's, uh, we have to take uh, urgent measures. And uh, the children of Indonesia are our future. I think this is very strategic for the future of Indonesia. The cost has been raised as a potential barrier that in the first year this could cost perhaps $7 billion. I understand the government is already looking at how, how to fund this program. But to you, that's not a concern? To me, that's not a concern. I've studied the problems. I've studied where we can uh, save and where we can reallocate. Mm -hmm. I'm, very, I'm very convinced. The aim of this project is to improve the quality of education that Indonesian children receive. What do you see as the main... Not only quality of... To, to, to help them in their health, in their fitness. You know, the stunting of Indonesia children is very, I would say, very saddening. So you this know. program is the intersection of health, education, a variety of aims. But one aim... The survival of the future of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. You know, we have started pilot projects already three months. We have started, not many, but we started in East Indonesia, we started in Kalimantan. And uh, everybody reports after two, three months the children are more lively, mm. attendance rate increase. You know, now they, they know when they come to school, there's, there's a lunch mm -hmm. or there's a meal. So we are very optimistic about it. Let's take a look at the situation in Eastern Indonesia, in Papua. We have seen incidents of torture, human rights abuses carried out by security forces against indigenous Papuans. There was a recent incident where a man was put in a barrel and tortured uh, by security personnel. When you see those incidents, what is your reaction? Uh, you know, we are the fourth largest population in the world. Mm. We are the size of Europe, mm -hmm. right? We have many incidents, I'm sure. There are violations. But you compare what's happening in many parts of the world, you know. I'm not defending it. We, we will take, we have taken. I think our, our record, we have taken uh, measures to punish our uh, security forces who have violated. But if you compare with the size of Indonesia, with the size of the population, 
The yeah, incidents seem exactly. to be concentrated, though, in, in Papua rather than throughout the country. How do you know that? Have you been there? Why did you go there? Well, it's very difficult, actually, huh? for foreign media <laughs> to, to enter Papua. You talk Papua as if... I'm not defending all incidents we will uh, deal with seriously, but, mm -hmm. you know, your question a bit one-sided. Mm -hmm. Why don't you open the YouTube mm -hmm. or the channels of, of these uh, so-called Papua independence movement? On their channel, you can see how they mistreat their own people. So would that be ensuring the security of the situation in Papua? How can that be done? Look, Indonesia is not only Papua. We will ensure security all over Indonesia, mm -hmm. right? And our approach is always to negotiate. You know, uh, these uh, terrorists who attack their own people, who attack schools, burn, uh, kill civilians. You talk about one incident. Yes. Do you know that they, they killed workers on the road? Yes, I know that there are. But many you didn't ask about it. How, how many workers they killed? Unarmed yes. civilian workers. How many workers they killed? Uh, Two, three, four? There have been many incidents. Huh? There have been many incidents. Yeah, what I'm saying is civilians. they carry out acts of terrorism. They, they uh, what do you call it, took a hostage, which they have not released. An unarmed foreign civilian, mm -hmm. right? Yes. The where, where is the indignation from? from the NGOs, from the foreign press, no? I think perhaps the indignation is, is for both sides, just for, for people to, to live safely, Mr. President-elect. and. Oh yeah, we will secure the safety mm -hmm. of our people. They've been attacking civilians mm -hmm. many, many times. Mm -hmm. And you guys don't report that. Well, well we try to report the, the full story. It's there. They, they propagate it. Mm -hmm. There is a perception from some human rights groups in Indonesia that perhaps what the situation needs is less militarization. That's our national territory. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are not guided by NGOs. We will be guided by our national interest. There was a, a, an earlier, uh, perhaps not a commitment, but a, a, a something like a promise that the Jokowi administration would allow some observers from the UN to enter Papua to, to take a look at the situation, but that visit did not happen. Do you see that as something that, that should happen so that perhaps there can be fewer questions about what is going on? I will study the situation. Mm -hmm. I will study the situation. And yeah. perhaps a visit could take place under your administration? I will study the situation, but as I said, uh, we will think about our national interest. Indonesia is one of the largest democracies in the world, and we just had a very spirited, lively election campaign, and it was quite, you know, it's quite wonderful to see how, how generally smoothly everything goes in a country of this size. How do we ensure that the democratic freedoms of Indonesians are protected? The democratic system is the interest of the Indonesian people. Sure. Right? The Indonesian people want a democratic system. Mm -hmm. Political power comes from the people. Mm -hmm. We go, we rule, we govern with the consent of the people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's our people who decide, mm -hmm. right? We are not going to be determined by uh, foreign uh, narratives, right? Foreign uh, interpretation of what democracy should look like. Do you think that those interpretations, when there are these reports that say there is democratic backsliding in Indonesia, is that a misinterpretation from your perspective? Of course. What backsliding? Mm -hmm. What backsliding? We have how many how many years of peaceful transfer of of government? Mm -hmm. How many governors have been changed? How many district bupatis have been changed? We have a living and vibrant democracy. Mm -hmm. Are we satisfied? No. Mm -hmm. Is there corruption? Yes. That's our problem and we have to deal with it. Democracy is messy. Mm -hmm. Democracy is tiring. But it's the only, it's the best system of politics. Mm -hmm. What is the alternative? Why do I get involved in four general elections? Mm -hmm. What have you learned from taking part in all those elections? It's strenuous, it's tiring, but yeah, that's what the people want. The people want a choice. But I do believe that democracy 
is in danger in everywhere, but especially in Russia, is in danger because of uh, because of corruption, because of uh, the concentration of wealth. There is a segment of the population, Mr. President-elect, that has expressed some concern on the basis of not your time as defense minister, but your past in the military, that they have concerns about, about that and accountability. How would you ensure that they also feel that you are a president for them? You talk about democracy. Mm -hmm. The people have decided. Full stop. Mm -hmm. What concerns? Mm -hmm. You know, in every election, they will try to look for this weakness and that weakness and this and that. And if I was a general, I'm a proud general. I serve my people, serve my country. I risk my life for my people. I've been accused of so many things. It's called demonization. Mm -hmm. so it that comes... is called character assassination. It's part of the tools of politics. Mm -hmm. So I, I face that, I risk that. Mm -hmm. Accusations are completely uh, insulting and very false, but that's, that's the name of the game. For the people who, who didn't vote for you, what would your message be to them? I told them that uh, they will see. Mm -hmm. I'm a man of my word. I will prove to them, right? And if you, if you study the social media, many of them have realized. Mm -hmm. So it, democracy elections, there will be uh, hard talk, there will be harsh criticism. That's part of democracy. Fine. But in the end, uh, I, I feel the mandate. I will work for my people. Even those who do not vote for me, I will, I will defend them. Let's move on to foreign policy. Mm. Indonesia has a long history of being non-aligned, charting a middle path. Mm. I believe one of the founding fathers referred to it as rowing between two reefs. How much of a priority is this for you? I, I, I said many times that this is our tradition, this is our history, that uh, we do not want to belong to any blocks. We do not want to belong, especially military alliances. Uh, our guiding philosophy is uh, to be friends with all mm -hmm. countries. In one particular situation that is significant for the region, the South China Sea, do you see that Indonesia could perhaps help with diffusing tensions in the region over that matter? I think we, we can try, and we would like to try, and, and we have tried. But uh, we also have shown uh, that by diplomacy, by negotiations, what I call the Asian way, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, I think we have diffused a lot of situation. I was at the Shangri-La Dialogue in yeah. Singapore that year that you gave the speech yeah. about the Asian way. Mm. Can you explain what that, what that means? Asia, South Asia, we have experienced a lot of uh, foreign interference mm -hmm. in the past several hundred years, right? I always say we never went to Europe, but the Europeans came to us, mm -hmm. they basically colonized us. They interfered in our internal politics for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. In India, in the Kingdom of Burma, in Indochina, Malaya, in China. China was invaded also in the last two, three, four hundred years, right? So we experienced that. We have this. And so, for instance, Southeast Asia, we were, we had wars in Southeast Asia. Fifty years ago, 60, I mean, you know, Indonesia was in armed conflict with Malaysia, with Singapore. But we solved it without foreign interference. We talked, we met. And that is the, the Asian way? I think so. Mm -hmm. In this current geopolitical climate yeah. where we see the U.S. and China competing for influence all over the world, but, but also in Southeast Asia, 
How does Indonesia manage that situation of, as you say, being friends with, with everyone, in this case, the US and with China? Because we are very open. You know, we, we, we come and say, look, we, we, we respect you. We are grateful to you for your past assistance. And we welcome you. Please come into Indonesia, take part in our economic development. We invite the Americans continuously. We invite the Japanese, the Koreans. They are very strong here. They've uh, invested here. We are open to them. The Europeans we invite. The Chinese we invite. And you were recently in China. Yes, I was in China. I was in Japan. I was in Malaysia. You see, so uh, we are very open. And we tell them, please, you know, uh, by the fact that we are friends with you does not mean that we cannot be friends with China, with India, with Russia. Indonesia is in quite a unique position in that. In that. We are unique, and I think uh, that's our strength. Mm -hmm. Do you think there is potential for in Indonesia to play a role, perhaps, in diffusing some of that tension between the U.S. and China, or do you see that situation as already being quite manageable? Well, if there are ways that we can be useful, we, we want to be useful. If there are ways that we can be useful, we want to be useful. But I think the fact that we, we have to give the example and we have to give the, the initiative that we have to convince all sides that, uh, you know, um, the world is getting smaller, and uh, prosperity of our people needs peace. Mm. There can be no prosperity without peace. You are now in this position of being able to shape Indonesia for this next period. How would you describe your vision for what you would like to achieve in these next few years? I am very clear. I just want to do my best to safeguard our resources to bring economic betterment to my people to alleviate poverty and hunger. That is my top priority.